This video covers the IGCSC Biology Objective 3.2.4 on the 2025 CAIE syllabus on investigating osmosis using dialysis tubing. So first of all, let's understand what dialysis tubing is. Um, dialysis tubing is this material that you see here. It comes in a roll. It's a very thin film and you can open it in the manner that you see in the picture and we can use it for experiments in science class dealing with osmosis. So this tubing, otherwise known as visking tubing, is in fact a partially permeable membrane. It is created for individuals that need to go through kidney dialysis and we'll learn more about kidney dialysis when we study the excretory system but just for now, what you need to know is that the visking tubing is material that is partially permeable. So it will allow certain materials to move through the tubing, either in or out, and other materials to not move in the tubing. So we can use it to represent a cell membrane. Okay, so in this first experiment with the visking tubing or the dialysis tubing, we take a concentrated solution, any type of material, it could be a salt, it could be starch, it could be sugar, and put it into the visking tubing, stopper it up, and in the stopper we would put a capillary tube, making sure that some of the uh, solution goes up into the capillary tube up to a certain level. That would be the part marked B on that diagram. The concentrated solution inside the visking tubing is then placed into pure water. And so of course we now have a water potential gradient that is created between the water in the beaker and the concentrated solution in the visking tubing. So what we see happen in the capillary tube is that the solution, which has some sort of color to it depending on what molecule is being used, will then increase. It will rise. And so we end up perhaps with a situation where the level of the uh, liquid inside the capillary tube has moved from B to A. So as a result of this, what we can see is that molecules of pure water have moved through the visking tubing by osmosis, thereby increasing the amount of liquid in the visking tubing, tubing slash capillary tube, and so the level of the liquid has increased. We also see that none of the molecules in the concentrated solution have moved out of that enclosed space. So the visking tubing is partially permeable because it only will allow water to move in and nothing to move out. In experiment two, we have a setup where we are using the visking tubing and in this case, we're going to put a starch solution into the visking tubing and tie it off at both ends. This is then placed into a beaker of pure water. The beaker of pure water is then given a few drops of iodine, and so it has this yellowish color to it, and it's allowed to be left for some period of time. The result that we get is what we see here in the third picture. So hopefully you recall that iodine is an indicator for the presence of starch, and so the water with the dilute iodine has been able to pass through the visking tubing into the starch solution and so iodine is then going to turn blue-black as we see there in the picture. Now we can see that no starch solution has been allowed to move out of the visking tubing because the there is no blue-black color in the beaker portion of the experiment. So that pure water has just stayed pure water with still a little bit of dilute iodine. That has remained unchanged. What has changed is only inside the visking tubing. So this is how we can use visking tubing to see how osmosis happens in a cell through the cell membrane.